What's up everybody, Tree City Wes here. Today we're going to be talking about the X1 blockchain, but we're going to be looking at the fundamentals. What is a blockchain? What is a DAG? What makes decentralization? How do all these things tie together to make up X1? We're going to be addressing a lot of the FUD that's floating around in the Twitter spaces, and we'll be making an overview of the technology that makes up X1. So here I'd like to start on the official website, the x1blockchain.net website. And here they have different links. You can get to the Twitter, the GitHub, the YouTube. You can access each of the test nets, including the DevNet, the FastNet, and the official X1 testnet where you can set up your validator and validate transactions with the latest mechanism. And then we also have the X1 Zenblocks mining where you can mine Zenium, Superblocks, and Zunis. But first we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to click on the GitHub. And we're going to take a look at the official Fair Crypto Foundation GitHub. The Fair Crypto Foundation aims to empower individuals in navigating the evolving world of cryptocurrencies through the understanding of first principles of crypto. And if you're familiar with the validator community and you're running a validator, this is the same GitHub repo that we're downloading when we run the software. So the official GitHub for the X1 blockchain says that X1 is a simple, fast, and secure EVM compatible network for the next generation of decentralized applications powered by the Lacus's consensus algorithm. And that Lacus's consensus algorithm is the same one that's used to power Phantom. So you can consider in that way X1 blockchain a fork of Phantom, but it also has some special sauce on it. So for this discussion, I really want to get down to the fundamentals of what the FUD and the conversation is about. So we're going to talk about what is a blockchain, what makes decentralization, and what is a DAG. So the first question we need to understand is what is blockchain technology? Well, first and foremost, plain and simple, blockchain technology is distributed ledger technology. A blockchain is a decentralized network that records transactions across many computers, called nodes, enhancing security and transparency. And the goal of a blockchain is to keep immutable records. Transactions are grouped into blocks and cryptographically linked, ensuring data is permanent and tamper-proof. That is the goal of a blockchain. And blockchains offer versatile network access. They can be public, they can be private, they can be consortium-based, allowing for a diverse control and access mechanism. They don't have to be 100% decentralized. It depends on the node distribution. It depends on if it's a private or a public blockchain, and it depends on how it's really used. So now that we know what a blockchain is, it's basically distributed ledger technology. What makes a blockchain decentralized or centralized? So here I've prepared a couple examples of some fully decentralized, some semi-centralized, and some fully centralized blockchains that we're gonna talk about. And to be honest, it's impossible for a blockchain to be 100% decentralized. When it launches, even Bitcoin, it launches from one person, one central entity, but it really depends on where it grows and what happens from there that can determine if it's centralized or decentralized. Because a decentralized, a fully decentralized blockchain operates without any central authority, distributing control to all participants or all the nodes. And the network relies on consensus, consensus mechanisms that validate transactions and secure the network. And these types of blockchains, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and hopefully soon to be X1, offer high levels of security, censorship, resistance, and trustlessness. Those are the pillars of first principles and something that X1 is working toward becoming. And then of course, there's semi-decentralized protocols. And for this example, I'd like to use Binance Smart Chain. Binance Smart Chain, or BSC, uses a proof of staked authority or POSA mechanism, restricting total validators to only 21 participants based on their BNB stake. So what this means is only 21 nodes are validating all the transactions and you can't just become a node on Binance. You need to have enough BNB to be able to do that. So all the power and control are held by Binance and all the BNB whales who are the largest stakers that control the network. So anytime something goes wrong or they need to stop the network, they only have 20 people to call. They start a Teams meeting and then they can turn off the network and restart things. And this design is why, even though it's a fork of Ethereum, it has less gas fees. This design ensures high efficiency and scalability for transactions, but it obviously raises concerns over centralization, disproportionate influence on network governance and security. Binance can basically do whatever they want because they own all the BNB and they can control all the validators. However, technically it is advertised as a decentralized platform. And then there's also blockchains that are fully centralized, something like De Beers. They utilize this tracer blockchain platform to ensure the authenticity of diamonds and that you can basically track the diamond from the the mind to the person. So while Tracer provides an immutable ledger for transparency, De Beers, the company that runs it, retains central control. And they basically run all the nodes and they can make data adjustments for accuracy, integrity. 
and it's a perfect example of a centralized DLT. So one of the keys for thinking of centralization in blockchains is it's not really a yes or no answer. There's nothing that's really fully decentralized or fully centralized. It's more of a spectrum and it's actually called a trilemma where you basically have three problems, speed, security, and centralization. And when you increase one, you take away from another. And solving that trilemma is the goal of the next generation of blockchains, including X1. So now that we understand what a blockchain is, what is a DAG? So there's a lot of questions around the Zen community about what is a DAG? Is a DAG centralized? Is it not a blockchain? Does it not have the, you know, the tenets of first principles? Well, it's basically just a data structure. It's, it's a type of technology. It's a directed, so a DAG is a directed acyclic graph, which is a decentralized ledger technology where transactions validate each other on a nonlinear blockless structure, allowing for parallel processing and increased flexibility. And so when you think of that blockchain trilemma, DAGs can kind of make things faster and more scalable without sacrificing too much security. And that also depends on how the blockchain itself is ran and how many nodes, how they're distributed, how they're created. Can anybody be a node or is it private? So one feature of DAGs are parallel transactions. Unlike blockchains where you think of a linear chain with blocks in between, DAGs process transactions in parallel, significantly increasing stability and scalability. So unlike blockchains, DAGs process transactions in parallel, significantly increasing scalability. So on a pure DAG, there are no blocks. It's basically just transactions verifying other transactions. DAGs eliminate the need for blocks to avoid bottlenecks of the blockchain's sequential chain model. So rather than dumping all of the transactions into a bucket that is a block and having to wait for that block, DAGs just instantly verify transactions and the transactions build upon each other kind of like a brick wall. But DAGs are efficient. They have low to no fees. The absence of miners and block rewards in DAGs typically result in lower transaction costs. And that also depends on the type of blockchain and how it's built. Obviously, there's different flavors of DAGs. Um, but most DAGs have rapid confirmation. Transactions and DAGs can confirm with each other, leading to faster network throughput. So rather than having to confirm the block, you basically just confirm other transactions. And it's adaptable technology. It's not a, It's not rigid and inside of a block like a blockchain. Uh, the DAG structure is more flexible than rigid block sequencers. With a DAG network, the network can scale more easily due to the reduced complexity of adding transactions. It doesn't have to pile them all in and then wait for the block to verify. So these three, first we have Hedera, which is the black age. That's the Hedera hash graph. That's an example of a DAG. We also have Phantom. So we're familiar with Phantom because X1 is forking some of the Phantom code, specifically the Lachesis mechanism. And then the third one here is Constellation DAG. It's just another example of a DAG blockchain. So just real quick here, DAGs versus blockchain. DAGs secure transactions by directly linking each new one to several previous transactions, creating a web of confirmations. You think of a blockchain, you think of a bunch of blocks chained together in a, in a linear fashion. It's more so transactions hitting the validators from every angle and different validators or groups of validators being able to approve transactions. And uh, this is different from how blockchains that use a group agreement to secure each block. DAGs are decentralized because everyone helps confirm transactions, not just a few big players. Transactions become immutable as they're confirmed by the trailing transactions. So even when you look at something like Bitcoin, look at who's confirming the Bitcoin blocks. And if you look at the Bitcoin blocks being mined, you'll start to see the same miners. And it's typically these big mining companies. And even though Bitcoin is the biggest and most decentralized network, there has been some question, are the miners too centralized and too big? But I don't think so. That high difficulty keeps the network straight. In Bitcoin, nodes are computers that keep a copy of the entire blockchain and follow the rules on the network. They can check and relay transactions and blocks, helping keep the network secure and up to date. Since anyone can run a node, there's thousands of worldwide that contribute strong to Bitcoin decentralization. You can run a node. People run nodes on anything. I'm actually running a node on a, an orange pie, which is a variation of a raspberry pie. And uh, it's pretty cool. You can set it up as a wallet. You can use it for inscriptions. And uh, it's, it's nice, it's easy to use, and that's what makes Bitcoin a strong decentralized network. So DAGs also have nodes, and nodes validate and relay transactions, but they may not store the entire history like Bitcoin. DAGs validate by directly linking new transactions to previous ones. However, if fewer people do run the nodes, it can lead to a more centralized network because fewer points are validating and maintaining transaction history. 
So that's one thing to keep in mind. You have to have nodes and you have to have transactions. If the network becomes unpopular over time and the amount of nodes and the amount of transactions drops off, it becomes easier to manipulate transactions when the confirmations are less over time. So basically what I'm trying to say is that DAGs can be blockchains. DAGs can be considered a form of blockchain technology because they share the core principle of DLT, a distributed ledger, and a decentralized network where transactions are recorded in a way that's transparent, immutable, and without a central authority. So blockchains and DAGs can be both centralized and decentralized. It depends on how they run, how the nodes are distributed, and how public or private the network is. So what makes X1 special? Why is it not a centralized blockchain like some of those other DAGs? Well, the X1 network uses a DAG-based consensus mechanism to ensure transactions are processed quickly and in a more scalable manner than traditional blockchains. And this is also how Phantom works. Like Phantom, X1 organizes the transactions into a chain of blocks for the sake of ledger history and data structure. So when you go to the Block Explorer, the X1 Explorer, you still see blocks and you still see transactions within those blocks. It just helps maintain the ledger history and data structure in those blocks. And this method allows for better security and more organization of the blockchain data with the added efficiency and scalability of the features of a DAG. So it's disingenuous to say that X1 is not a blockchain. It is a blockchain and it does have blocks and there's transactions within the blocks and they're organized into a chain of blocks for the sake of ledger history and data structure. So even though the consensus mechanism is different and it's not Nakamoto consensus, it's still decentralized. There's self-custody, transparency, consensus, it's permissionless. It's everything you'd want in a blockchain. And it is a blockchain and it's also a DAG and it's also decentralized. So why would we use both? Why would X1 use both? So the hybrid approach of using both DAGs and blocks addresses some of the inherent limitations of traditional blockchain technologies like Bitcoin and Ethereum using Nakamoto consensus. This DAG hybrid consensus mechanism offers improved scalability and transaction speed without completely abandoning the proven security and organizational benefits of blocks on a blockchain. So a DAG consensus layer allows networks to process and validate transactions more quickly and efficiently. Then by organizing these transactions into blocks, they maintain a coherent and chronological ledger that's easy to organize and verify. So in conclusion, is a DAG a blockchain? Is a blockchain a DAG? Is a DAG centralized, decentralized? What about the blockchain? Well, the decentralization of a blockchain or DAG is determined by the distribution of its nodes, regardless of the consensus mechanism, such as Nakamoto for blockchains or DAG-based mechanisms like Tangle or Lachesis. If nodes are widely dispersed among different users and organizations, the system is decentralized, while centralization occurs when a few entities control most of the nodes, regardless of the technology used. As long as the nodes are distributed, and it's a true distributed ledger technology, technology that can't be edited, that has immutable blocks, that offers self-custody and transparency. It's a decentralized blockchain, and that's exactly what X1 is going to be. So I hope this little presentation clears up any questions or FUD. As always, you can find me on Twitter at TreeCityWest. Feel free to reach out to me on Telegram at TreeCityWest.eth. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys stay zen. Peace.